Are you allergic to anything? You've probably been aware that the incidence of allergies and intolerances has exploded in the last 20 years. Things like allergies to dairy, nuts, shellfish and even red meat are increasingly common. Allergy UK reports that the incidence of peanut allergy has doubled in the last decade. One in 50 primary school age children has a peanut allergy. My son is allergic to peanuts and it's had a big effect on him and of course our family. He has to be very wary of what's in the food he eats and he carries an EpiPen with him all the time. Well, what's this got to do with hip surgery? Keep watching and of course I'll tell you all about it. Hip replacements have been around for nearly a hundred years. The modern era of hip replacements started in the early 60s with Sir John Charnley's pioneering work. Nothing's perfect, even hip replacements. Charnley knew that infection, dislocation and wear were problems that caused hip replacements to fail. Since those early days, the materials and the techniques that we use have of course evolved. We constantly try to improve the results of our surgery for patients so that their new hips give them a lifetime of pain relief and better function. It doesn't always work though. Back in the 80s, one of the giants of British orthopaedics, Michael Freeman, wrote a seminal textbook on the scientific basis of joint replacement. He looked at how our bodies and the implants that we use in surgery interact with one another and why they sometimes go wrong. It's still really relevant some 40 years on. Most hip replacements are made of metals including stainless steel, chromium cobalt and titanium alloys. These are tough and durable and for most people they're very biocompatible. This means that they aren't harmful to your health. They've been around for a long time and for most people they work really well. About 20 years ago though we started to use some hip replacements that had a big head and a socket. They were made from cobalt chromium alloy, the same as a hip resurfacing. The idea was that the tough alloy would be both very resistant to wear and much less likely to dislocate. But within a couple of years, we started to see some big problems. In some people, they started to get pain in the hip and the implants looked like they were becoming loose. We had to revise or redo the hips. When we opened up the joint, we were shocked to see terrible damage to the muscles and bones caused by a reaction to the metal. Look away now if you don't want to see what we found during surgery. At first it was only a few patients and then we started to see increasing numbers. It was terrible. This class of hips was quickly withdrawn from use. New regulations were put in place. Lessons were most definitely learned. But 20 years on, there are still lots of people happily walking around with these hips. We keep a close eye on them, of course, and they haven't yet had a problem. But why is that? Well, it probably comes back to allergies. It's definitely the case that some people are much more sensitive than others to the metals like nickel, cobalt and chromium we use in joint replacements. About 13% of the UK population has a nickel allergy. It's much more common in women who tend to be prone to allergies generally more than men. Some people think they might be sensitised to nickel when they start to wear jewellery in their teens. Years later, when they have a hip replacement, the allergy kicks in. Exposure, of course, isn't the only factor though. Like everything else, there must be genetic factors that predispose some people to having an allergy. So how do we avoid these problems? Well, I always ask my patients if they have a history of metal allergies, like skin rashes when wearing earrings or watches. If they do, I don't use anything that contains nickel, cobalt or chromium. But what happens if you're allergic to your hip? In my experience, people tend to have persistent grumbling pain around the hip. It feels like it's never been right. But these symptoms can also be caused by a deep infection, so it's really important to have them carefully assessed. We use blood tests, x-rays and scans to look for the cause of your symptoms and plan treatment. But what does this mean for you if you're considering surgery or you've had a hip replacement? Well, the first thing to say is that the vast majority of people will not have a problem with the sorts of hip replacements that we use these days. If you're worried, then speak to your surgeon. He or she will be best placed to give you the right advice. Should we test everybody for metal allergies before surgery? Well, until recently, there hasn't really been a reliable enough test to use. But a team in Newcastle has developed a blood test that can predict whether or not someone might react to an orthopaedic device. It's called Orthotype. I'll leave a link to it below. 
and it could be a game changer. Watch this space. Well, I hope you found this interesting. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you'd like to get in touch, the details are below in the description. Thanks for watching. See you all again next time.